Hi, I'm Jeff Baker, and today I want to talk to you about helping others. As you've seen in other videos on our page, God moves in some pretty incredible ways up here at the Faith Mission. And I want to take this opportunity to show you exactly how God moves in the lives and hearts of those that we get the opportunity to serve. The story I want to share with you actually parallels with the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. Prior to telling the parable, Jesus was asked what one must do to inherit eternal life. His response was simply to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, as well as to love your neighbor as yourself. The man then asked Jesus, who is to be considered my neighbor? Jesus at that point tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. For those unfamiliar, the story can be found in Luke chapter 10, verses 30-37. through 37. Jesus talks about a man who had been robbed, beaten, and left for dead. While on the side of the road, he's met by a priest who consequently goes to the opposite side of the road and passes the man by. Secondly, a Levite, another religious man, shows up and avoids the injured man. Lastly, a Samaritan comes by. His heart was broken by the man's condition. The NIV version says that he felt compassion. The Samaritan gave the man first aid, loaded him up on his animal, and brought him to a nearby inn to take care of him. The Samaritan gave the innkeeper money the following morning for continued care. He even went as far to say that if the man required additional aid, that he would return and pay for that as well. <laughs> now that is a story of someone who's willing to go above and beyond to help their neighbor. Over the past year, the faithfulness of our donors has really pulled us through. The needs of the mission have changed drastically since 2020. We went from needing to clean our shelters once a day to having a rotating shift that works throughout the day. We had to increase the number of sanitizing stations as well as the frequency at which they were filled. On top of the new concept of social distancing, many of our clients went from of never wearing a mask to us handing out boxes of them daily. Our vehicles received excess wear and tear due to the increased amount of doctor visits we were shuttling our guests to and from due to illness. On top of that, the fatigue from our staff members who continued day and night to be a light to those who were hurting and afraid. Now we'd be naive to think, however, that we were in a bubble and that we were the only ones affected by last year. Many of our staff members and clients were personally affected by the trials. You see though, that's where the miracle began. Last year I had a meeting with all of our program students just to see how everyone was handling the things that were going on in the world around them. And like the Good Samaritan walking down the road, these men who were on the road to recovery from issues ranging from pending prison sentences all the way to extreme addiction, they felt compassion. The men had been so overwhelmed by the generosity of the community that all they wanted to do was give back. You know, I've mentioned before that the motto here at the Faith Mission is every person has a story, and every story matters to God. Well, I want to tell you, that includes you. You have a story, and your story matters to God. The reality of the situation is that many people are only one catastrophic event or sudden life change away from needing a form of service that's offered by the mission. Since that meeting, the men of New Beginnings have stepped into action. We've done our best to nurture that developing heart of a servant in their lives. Over the past year, they've banded together on multiple occasions and helped to give out boxes of food to the community. During the freeze this past February, the men assisted in handing out cases of water to those in need. A local church even flooded due to a busted pipe. The men volunteered their time to help pull out the carpet and tile and get the church reopened. Most recently, the men participated in our semi-annual firewood giveaway. The program students were allowed to be a part of the decision-making process and exactly how they gave back. None of these events were a situation where they were told what was necessary for them to do. Rather, they were simply told the need and they rose to the occasion and volunteered. You see, it would have been easy for these men to focus inwardly on themselves and what they were going through. And quite frankly, no one would have blamed them. Just like the Samaritan man, if we would have looked at the police lineup of the men who would have stopped and helped the beaten man, the Samaritan traveler would have likely been picked least likely to stop and assist. That's the beauty of how God works though. His greatest miracles come from places that once the dust settles can only be traced back to having being orchestrated by Him. And it always starts from a place of feeling compassion.